So that was Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, we want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols that you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what for investing you choose, stock forex futures options, they all have a lower risk associated with them. Any strategy we do today are for informational purposes only. Uh, future results are not guaranteed. And most importantly, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. This is our stock market technical analysis wrap up for Saturday, June 4th. We're going to look at the economic calendar. We're going to review uh, price action from the week. We will identify key support and resistance price levels. Look at the gold and crude chart. And we have education spotlight at the end. So when we look at the past week, we know that all three major indices fell for the week. We're down to, with the Dow Jones the most up at 5%, 3%, 3.25% uh, for the S&P 500. And the market tumbled about 2% for the week. All 10 of our major sectors uh, fell at least 1%. And it is important to note that we have our first sector materials that is now negative for the year, year uh, negative growth for the year. We did have renewed uh, Greece concerns. Uh, Moody's cut its debt to CAA1 for B1 with a high probability uh, default. And statistics show that usually it's 20% within a year of default, 35% uh, within two years of default. So that affected the market. Um, there was no real big corporate news, but it's always nice to point out that Apple's worldwide uh, development conference starts this week. And as far as economic news, of course, the main employment system was a big story. ADP gave an insight on Wednesday, and the non-farm only rose 54,000 instead of 169,000. Unemployment rose to 9.1%. So although the uh, jobs are continuing to happen, they're not growing at a, at a rate to bring down the unemployment. When we look into next week, we don't have any key earnings. And you can see we really don't have any... Uh, economic catalyst next week either so the true seminar of the market selling may go away may be an effect and we're going to look at the charts and show you some key price levels that were hit this week okay so we have the S&P 500 a daily chart and uh, you know we've been talking about this downtrend for a while and we are now looking at a descending wedge type pattern as we look at it uh, we've got a downtrend line, and we've we've had this 1,300 support level in here for a while, and we came and closed right at it. So that's important to see that we came, and we not only did we come at it. This is the gap down from Thursday to Friday morning. We we actually gap down. Now we did rise all the way up and then come right back down. So uh, that's certainly interesting. Um, which will be more prevalent on the on the spy chart than on the SBX. Uh, so as we look at this move down, we're now below the 20 and the 50 moving average, descending wedge pattern, certainly a little bearish. Uh, we're at support level, and so now we got to figure out if we continue to go lower, where will we go? So we got to come over this way, and we can see that our first uh, price level for support, our next target, will be in uh, this range right here. You can see it was resistance here, support here. So there's a target, and then we could match up, uh, you know, what's going on here, what's what's going on over here too. So we got 1275 and we got 1255 as potential targets once we, uh, if we continue to go lower, and of course that will get us all the way down to the 200 moving average on the daily chart. Now our, our indicators are all now heading down towards oversold. Uh, MACD is heading down. Our size is probably the closest to oversold. And um, stochastics are also heading down towards oversold. Let's zoom out to the weekly, see what we got. Uh, make it a little bigger. And so here we can see we're finally breaking the 20 moving average. We did close below it on a weekly. We hadn't done that in a while. It's been all the way back here in August of uh, 2010 was the last time on a weekly chart that we closed. Now we have a wick here, but it's the last time we closed below the uh, 20 moving average. And so uh, what is the 200 moving average support on the daily is the 50 moving average support on the weekly. Uh, our weeklies are now all heading down, um, so we're getting we're starting to get multi-time frame agreement to the downside. Uh, 
uh, well, not the daily, we want, we want to go all the way down to the monthly now. And on our monthly, we're starting to get the rollover on the monthly. Stochastic's heading down, RSI heading down, MACD's getting ready to roll over. And we can see we're getting ready to come down to the 10 moving average on the monthly. So uh, certainly we're starting to get a rollover. We're starting to get that dual time frame agreement, <laughs> uh, trifold <laughs> agreement that the market wants to move lower. Okay, let's start off with Apple. And what we see on the daily chart is well, we've been talking about the support and the range. And it feels like the market comes down, comes down, comes down, testing the trend line. And it looks like we've just done the same thing. We bounced and found a trend line. So, you know, I, I'm beginning to think you can see the 20 to 50 million garments is not being respected. So, uh, even though we did bounce there on Friday. I would, wouldn't be surprised to see us come down and hit 330 again. I'm not guaranteeing that, but if we break 349 here, or 341, uh, I would imagine we're coming all the way back down here to 330. We can see over here on the market profile that we have this gap here from 341, and it comes right on down. So if we break probably Friday's low, we're heading probably all the way back down to 330. Um, but... You know, even it's a descending wedge pattern. Apple had a good week, and then you know, market it came down with the market sort of a little gap here. Um, I'll say Apple sideways to down. Uh, Amazon, Amazon uh, was ha had earnings and, and took off, and you can see all the little patterns we've been drawing, and now we've closed below the 50 million average. That certainly bears our market profile. Um, we we broke through, and uh, it certainly looks. This this is, looks weak. Um, there's a little resistance here at 187 ish uh, that we might find a little bounce at. Uh, but overall, I would say this definitely looks weak. Let's go ahead and draw that in there. Uh, so it, we'll see if it finds support here. If it breaks here, um, then we're coming down to uh, the gap and possibly even the field of gap, which would get us to the 200 moving average. Uh, next, we have Google. What is Google doing? Google has been a consolidating mess, which means when it finally breaks out, Google is going to break. Um, you know, so you might have an alert above 545 or below, you know, 514 here because this is going to break one or the other. But Google, you know, I mean, look how weak Google is. It's below the 50, below the 20, 20s, below the 200. Heck, it's below the 500. So it's certainly showing a lot of weakness. Uh, we're, we're revolving around the market profile. There is a little volume support here at 520 uh, and a little bit more down here at 517, and that's what you're seeing. So we're at 515, and there's a little support at 520. So Google's is a sideways mess. Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs, uh, certainly weak. Uh, uh, weaker than even Google, uh, 500, 200, way up here. Um, so it's certainly leading the way the market lower a little volume support here at 134 uh, But this one started the week. So we've got Apple sideways this Amazon sideways this week uh, Google week Goldman Sachs week. So sort of two for two um, Netflix who can stop Netflix? That's the question <laughs> Uh, nothing can stop Netflix. In the face of all the, the bearishness in the market this week, Netflix just keep on keeping on. So we got volume support here at 230, uh, 273. Uh, so let's see if we can get a pullback. F let's try to buy a pullback on that. And finally, Priceline. Priceline we, looks like we have a descending wedge that we're watching here as we're consolidating. Uh, a lot of volume support resistance in here, consolidation to get through. Um, ultimate of our descending wedge is around 491. So um, this one's sort of like Apple, a sideways to down. Overall, really Netflix is our only really truly bullish one. Every other one else is either sideways or it's down. As we look at gold, we can see um, uh, certainly uh, we've found support in the 50 moving average and the 20 moving average, and we're holding up at 5, 1540. 
Uh, point of control is at 1537 so we got some volume support just below us that's certainly good and we're trying to stay above 1540 which is um, this little swing high here uh, and with obvious potential of going to test 1577 that's swing high markets going down uh, potential of another QE as the market goes down which may weaken the dollar although the dollar strengthening but we may see a flight to gold which will send us up to the past swing high and as far as crude is concerned it's really just a consolidating mess um, although certainly we wish it would be cheaper so the gas will go down but you can see uh, for pretty much the most of May we've stayed in between 102 and 96 and we continue to stay there and you can see the bell curve of volume support and resistance to point of control at 100. As we move into our education portion we've been talking about what separates winning and loser traders what are some qualities of high probability traders consistent traders and if I were to sum it all up it's they recognize and respect the golden rule of trading and the golden rule of trading is cut your losses and let your winners run it's not about getting a tick by tick battle it's not about uh, being wrong it's about having a setup and if it works great if it doesn't that's the cost of doing business it's about recognizing your risk how much money you're going to risk in order to get to your target your risk reward ratio um, it's like that cartoon you know one for me one for you two for me one two for you three for me one two three for you you're not gonna this tick by tick battle over when it's going for you and against you cut your losses let your winners run live to trade another day so we are on Facebook YouTube YouTube and Twitter we are move up with Mike on uh, YouTube and Twitter. We have a page, Are You Financially Literate, on Facebook that covers the whole gamut of personal finance. And uh, we have some resources for you. We got a great five part video course on how to develop a high probability trading setup, michaelglass.com, freevideo.html. We also have a video package on developing a trader's mindset with some free reports for you. That's at tradersmindset.html. Um, but more importantly, we can coach you. We can coach you up one on one live and we'll help you develop a personalized trading plan for who you are as a trader. Um, we have a great relationship intraday margins, low as $300, 20 free trades. And we have a charting package uh, that works on both PCs and Mac to help you scan and find the big movers. In the end, it doesn't matter about your trading system, indicator, newsletter, or what system you're using. If you don't pull the trigger, and that's what I and our coaches will help you do, give you that psychological capital that you need to pull the trigger. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.